by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. Do you have a horse? I have a white horse, Major. 
His name is Silver. Then you must be... Of course, that's who you are. Before I came west, General Caldwell told me of you. You know the general? We've been privileged to perform certain duties for him and the government in the past. Well, then tell me. Is there some way to get word to the army post at Leavenworth? Yes, Major. The nearest town is Atchison. We'll be able to send a wire from there. Then right there, please. Ask them to intercept the Missouri Bell. Oh, Major, just a minute. The river curves in a great arc below here. The boat must travel in almost a semicircle before it reaches Atchison. It arrives there about dawn. It does? Yes, it's docked there for about an hour. If you're willing to try it, sir, we can ride on a straight line across country. We'll be in Atchison by the time the boat arrives there. Willing to try? Man, my entire future and the future of this country may depend on it. I'm strong enough to... Say, I have no horse. Silver's a strong one, Major. You'll be able to carry us both, believe me. Otto, we get ready to ride at once. Uh Ah, if we can intercept those two spies. Spies? Yes. You wonder about that? Well, let me tell you. You can be trusted, and I owe my life to you. It may seem startling, but ever since the war between the North and South, certain foreign powers have figured we're a nation without military strength. I have heard rumors that one or more of European nations might invade this country if they were sure our military defenses aren't strong. But those aren't rumors. They're facts. Major Burton told of his mission to all the military posts in the South and Southwest and the posts in the Plain and Mountain Territories. I was traveling in civilian clothes, and I thought in great secrecy. I must have been mistaken. I completed my mission and had assembled all the military information in a packet which I carried on my person at all times. I boarded the Missouri Bell at Omaha. It was on my way to St. Louis. The Major had told how he had gone directly to his outside cabin aboard the boat and how he had remained in his stateroom with the door locked at all times. I intended to get by on the army rations which I carried in my baggage. But early this evening, there was a knock at my cabin door. I wasn't using my own name, as you might imagine. But I thought perhaps it might be the captain or one of the crew making inquiries about my remaining in my cabin. I decided to answer the knock. So I walked to the door. Yes? Who is it? Open the door fast. Let me in. I ask who is it? Me, Major. I have a message for you. What, what did you say? Major Burton, it's important. Open the door and let me in. Uh, just a second. Who are you? Why did you call me, Major? Let me in. No. Don't reach for that gun. You're covered. Someone, Major, is opening the door just because I called your name when no one was supposed to know it. What do you want? That package you're carrying. What else? The one with the troop information. What is it? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not a Major. Give me that gun. Give me that gun. You're smart, huh? Oh, I brought that gun. Oh, I'm a Major. What's the only way? What happened? I shot him. Did anyone hear the noise? I'm not sure. The whistle was blowing, but I was outside. Close the door. Yes. There. Did you not see the shot was heard? No one is at the back of the post. They are dying. Never mind. Let's search his arm, Bray, get that package you're looking for. We'll have to work fast. I'll go through his clothes. You go through his baggage. And I lost consciousness just about then. I faintly recall her carrying me outside after the man with the accent said the deck was clear. I was too weak to struggle and... Next thing I remember, I was hitting the water. That's all. Then I came to here. The package with the papers, Major. Did they get it? Yes. I had it strapped around my waist. I couldn't miss it. Oh, what a fool I was to answer that door. I should have known. We packed him, Bobby. We ready to go. All right, Cuddle. A few minutes later, with Major Burton sitting in front of the Lone Ranger, the masked man Tuttle started cross country for the town of Atchison. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. The two men who had robbed and disposed of Major Burton, American renegade Nebo Scott, and the foreign agent Paul Saline, sat in a cabin aboard the Missouri Bell. Dawn was breaking when both men glanced anxiously at their watches. Scott spoke first. We'll be in Atchison in less than an hour. Yeah. Say, Celine, uh, are you sure things will work out the way you say? That there'll be a coach waiting for us? This big wheel from your country will be in it? You mean the, the envoy? Yeah. But certain. When you learned last week that Major Burton would leave by boat from Omaha, I notified our envoy at once. 
evil. Huh? When we dock the boat, we go ashore at once and get into the coast. That is the only thing that is important now. I suppose they learned that Burton's mission from his cabin. If they haven't learned that now. They're not bothered to learn it during a period of landing activity. But suppose some army men come from Leavenworth. They will board the boat later. Now that that's the thing. By the time we need to be safe. Scott had crossed low on the floor so that he would not be seen from the outside. 
tall Sally, sitting beside an impressive-looking old man, stepped from the coach and faced Marshal Getty. What does he mean, Matty? Too hard. You? I'm the marshal of this town. Oh, get back into the coach. I'll handle this. The old man, a figure of outraged dignity, stepped from the coach as Paul Saline quickly returned to the seat inside. The old man faced Marshal Getty and flourished official papers already in his hand when he emerged. You peasant, you assassin! How dare you fire up on my coach? How dare you try to murder me? I wasn't trying to murder anybody. I'm the law. I told your driver to stop. The world shall hear of this indignity to the envoy of a friendly nation. Such an insult. You... Do you know who I am? No. I please. am a diplomat. I am immune to arrest and search. Oh, 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 oh. Marshal, what's going on here? Why don't you... Mr. LaPorte. Oh, so this man knows me. You know this man, Major? Yes. I've seen him in Washington. He's the chief representative from one of the European countries. <laughs> later, back in the marshal's office, a white-faced and shaking Major Burton spoke indignantly as he told the Lone Ranger... And he was right. He possesses diplomatic immunity anywhere in this country. I'll advise Leavenworth, now wired to the War Department in Washington, too. But even they'll be unable to stop the man without the hazard of starting a war. I never heard of such boss before. I was willing to arrest the whole shebang, but they started spouting all that law stuff and talked me out of it. Major, do you think those papers of yours are in that coach? Certainly. Just as I'm sure the men who stole them are in it. Paro, do you know that coach when you see it again? The one crooks go way in? Huh? Team the study. Then we're riding after it. Now, hold on. What are you going to do? Something the army or the law can't do. Major, if I were you, I'd head for Leavenworth at once. Perhaps I'll see you there before the day's over. Come on, Paro. Ah. Well, I'll be so
and the Lone Ranger and Toto reach the army post at Leavenworth, they sent Nebo Scott and Paul Stalin over to the authorities. When the Lone Ranger told his story, he gave the commanding officer the stolen packet. The officer said, Thank you. The nation will be grateful for what you've done. <laughs> Major Burton arrived later in the day in a specially hired stagecoach. On board the Flore and the Flore's coachman were with him. I found them trudging along the road on my way here. Colonel, did a masked man arrive here today? Why, yes. He's gone now, but he brought us Nebo Scott. Why, a renegade army man has already confessed to following you aboard the Missouri Bell. Scott also confessed that he shot you and implicated the other man, Paul Salim. Oh, no, no. I'm holding a certain packet. Oh, and... wonderful. Mr. LaFleury told me what happened. He said an outlaw held him up and stole a... Mr. LaFleury, what did the outlaw steal? Oh, no, you are smart, aren't you? You are trying to implicate me, a diplomat, in a matter of espionage. Well, I shall deny everything. For diplomatic reasons, I'm sure you're doing the right thing. You'll save your country's soiled honor and let Saline go to jail. I deny I know such a man. And let me tell you, you could not use legal means to do what you did. You had to resort to that, that outlaw. Only because that man is a law unto himself, LaFleury, and no outlaw. For our own reasons, we too shall be diplomatic in our reports. We'll say we did not violate your immunity status. We'll say that was done by the man you mentioned. But just between the three of us, LaFleury, we'll all know that he's the Lone Ranger. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.